Welcome, everyone, to the Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, and with me, as always, is Sal. How's it going, everybody? Capone. Happy to be here. Sal Capone. Sal Capone, the man. And uh, this is the greatest show on any platform ever. Hey. <laughs> hey. Maybe yeah. one day, maybe one day we'll get a few people to listen to us. Well, you know, once that happens, then it'll be all over but the crying, because then, you know, we're going to get mobbed like the freaking- Like the Beatles? Like the Beatles, yeah. People don't know, though. I'm actually the fifth Beatle, and I'm 80 years old. I'm the ninth Beatle. If you go to my Facebook, the internet doesn't lie. I put, I, I gave him my birthday. I was born in 1939. Awesome. There you go. Yeah. It, an ancient one I am. There you kind go. Kind of like what we're going to talk about today. Awesome. I like that. I like yeah. the idea because I've always been curious about- Vampires. Yeah. It's just curious. We're going to get that email address real quick. You want to do it? Oh, yeah. Let's do that. DosWolfman88 at gmail.com. And Wolf and Sal at gmail.com. Hit us up. Send us your messages. Uh, you guys can always PM me on Facebook if you're my friend on Facebook. And uh, give me your crazy, creepy stories, and I'll get them out as fast as I can. We're kind of backlogged right now, but we're getting out what we can. Um, we've been getting inundated with requests oh, to I do know. vampires. Oh, I know. But it's always been an interesting subject because, um, well, thanks to Hollywood, you know, in the last, what, 78? Well, actually, I take that back. Nosferatu. Nosferatu was the one that kicked it off. Yep. And then after that, it was all the other. You know, I always liked Bram Stoker. Yeah, Bram Stoker's was pretty was good. A good one, dude. I, I like that. I, I like the Bella Lugosi. It was pretty good. It's, but you know, you know the guy when I was growing up that scared the living daylights out of me as Dracula was Christopher Lee. I mean, the guy was just was that a Hammer film? Was that the Hammer films? Shit, I'd I be lying if I told you. But I'm telling you that that that, that Christopher Lee back in the day in the in the Mid to uh, mid to late sixties when he played Dracula. Yeah, it was the Hammer films, I believe. Yeah, was I mean, it? Was it D? It yeah. was, yeah, it was. You know what? They should have made a part two to, to Bram Stoker's Dracula and ruined it, like they do everything. Oh, of course. Like Bram Stoker relocates to Las Vegas and just becomes an <laughs> yeah. alcoholic yeah. gambler. Well, he, like Dracula dead and loving it. It would have been. It would have been Dracula drinking drunks people. You know the alcoholic's Dr blood. Dracula so he could drinking get drunk. and loving it. Yeah, that's what you know. Who's you know who's the uh, the expert on vampires? Is Scorpio. Really? Yeah, he claims to know a lot about him because he used to play some game or something. So he's always nice. telling me about him, and then he tells me a lot me, of folklore tied into the. Yeah, game he's or real something. into that. That numerology he knows a lot about. And he was nice. telling me that the vampires, um, they actually get drunk by drinking people's blood. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, I I've always understood, according well, of course you got to think pop culture. Most people have never really delved into the actual history behind. The whole vam the vampire, I guess genre, the vampire history, if you will, but it would make sense in accordance with pop culture that you know everyone has their own, you know, belief. B well, as far as a vampire is concerned, everybody has their own particular take on brand it, brand and take you know, or, or, and vampires and vampires having their their own particular likes and dislikes of certain blood types. I, I, could, I, could, I could get with that. I could understand. That sounds sensible. Mm -hmm. You know? You got people out here, if they if they get drunk on on people's blood, well, you know, some, hey, I like I, I like me some A positive. How about you? Oh, no, me. I and, how, and how would they know, though? Would they go around smelling it? I, I, I tell you what, <clears throat> Eastern know. Europe, every Eastern European country has its own take on it. And I'm going to yeah. get into all the weird names and stuff that they have. The most famous, But, but they have... What you know, the most famous Vlad Tepes? Vlad, oh yeah, yeah, Vlad the Impaler. True, true, a real guy, real but he guy. yeah wasn't considered. But he they claimed he did drink blood. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it was a, it was a scare tactic. Definitely, the Impaler, okay. <clears throat> Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. So you know everyone has their own take on it. The, the, the Eastern Europeans have their own, you know, and then the Western Europeans have their own whatever. Um, there are those that claim that when a werewolf, I know that this was a Romanian slash Hungarian legend. See, they, I've always I've always loved those legends in Eastern Europe because it's such an old country and it, there's so much gone. There's so much history and so many things have gone on in there. It's just mm -hmm. it's amazing. Well, it's I'm amazing. trying to tell you, but you're uh, I'm ready to hear it, okay, man. All I'm right, stoked, right. man. So, anyway, there, there there's a there's a legend, and I believe it's Romanian. Don't, don't quote me, but I think that's what it was. I read that when a werewolf is killed, when he dies, he becomes a vampire. Really? How's yeah, that, like how when he work? when he dies, he he comes back as a vampire. 
So how does that work? I don't know. I just know I read it. it it's it's a Slavic legend, and I believe it's like uh, not Hungarian because they're not Slavs, but I believe it was like a Romanian or a Slavic legend. Mm-hmm. One of the, the two. I don't I don't remember, but I just know that they, that I read that, and it's Eastern European. Um, <clears throat> the Hungarians have a really weird uh, belief in vampires and werewolves because you know the Hungarians are actually an anomaly in that region. They don't. They're not related to the Slavs or the Latins or any of the other. They're right at the, um, when you think about where Hungary sits. It, it, no, 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 no. That's not what I mean. Like everyone around them is related, but they're not. Their closest relatives are Finnish. Oh, you're talking about as far as. Genetics. Uh, genetic, genetics. The yeah. Hungarians are mo- more closely related to Northern Europeans. That's interesting. Yeah. Because like my dad, on my dad's side, he did the, G- the DNA and all that. And he's like 80%. Scandinavian, like Northern European. Right. But it comes from two different regions that aren't even from Scandinavia. When we traced our history, it's like Cossack, which were really just Scandinavians that ended up in Russia. Cowboys. And they killed, <clears throat> well, they're not Russian at all. The they, they, yeah, they basically just killed all the Slavs in that region and just settled there. Yeah. And then the other is from Normandy, which are the Normans, which were mm-hmm. Vikings. Mm-hmm. And they just took over that region in France and just settled there. And we have, we have blood from both those places. But, oh, you know, it's crazy. But you, but you you end up being Northern European just yeah, because well, the, the Vikings got around. They did. They got around. They did, and so my dad's back basically eighty percent Viking. You know, so <laughs> wow. makes sense. That's what I. That's why I'm big, and you know, whatever. But um, yeah, and my mom's side is just Spaniard and Comanche. Mm. Pretty volatile mix. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, enough about genetics. Yeah. Uh, vampires are from. They're from every culture. There's a vampire in Japan that, that that's pretty bad. There's a vampire in Korea. They do all these different things. And, and in the time we have today, I don't have time to tell you all the different legends. Maybe we can go back one day and talk about the legends of the folklore. What I have for you today is some stories. It's some stories like from that. eyewitnesses that have seen one. And I'll begin with a really crazy one. Now, before we get started down this, this the vampire rabbit hole, I guess it's kind of a rabbit hole because it's so hard to really nail down something solid i guess the 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 thread that we always hear about is their tie uh, that ties them together is is blood the 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 need for blood mm-hmm. in one form or another so yeah yeah that's interesting let's let's hear it brother yeah I mean, life source yes because there there are people that talk about it's such a broad subject it's hard mm-hmm. to just do one show but energy vampires another one but we're not yeah. talking about those today we're going to talk about the kind that actually that supposedly suck your blood or or, or maybe they were going to i don't know yeah. i mean I'll start with this one. Uh, I used to date this girl. I didn't date her. She was my girlfriend, but I've dated a, a couple girls from this city of El Paso. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've talked about vampire legends from El Paso, and yeah. we've talked about them from uh, New Orleans, the two oh, cities yeah. that we get the yeah. reports from. Uh, the first one I want to talk about, <clears throat> this was a girl I went out with a long time ago, and she was really apprehensive about telling me the story. Right. And I knew not to push too much because I had dated somebody from El Paso before. And it's like, you know, I don't want to get 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 stabbed. (laughs) I don't want to get stabbed. But she had a story and I finally got her to tell me the story. And then I felt kind of bad because it actually made her cry. But she had was having nightmares about it. And I told her about what happened to me. And what she told me was she goes, well, that's a werewolf. What you saw. She goes, what I saw was a vampire. Oh. And I never really knew what it was that she was having these nightmares back. She wouldn't tell me. And so her friend told me that she had gotten attacked by some guy in a parking lot. But that didn't that wasn't that didn't do justice to the story that she eventually told me. It made it very generic, huh? Well, yeah, I mean, she would wake way. up like screaming and having these, you know, and punching me, you know. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Well, she finally told me what it was. There was there was an incident with her. She was on a date with a guy. And Fort Bliss is in El Paso, right? Yes, okay. It is. And there's a, I guess this, there, there were soldiers there, you know, mm-hmm. there, there were two uh, soldiers that, that comes in later, but you know, Fort Bliss, it was, she, they went to go eat at a restaurant and <clears throat> I guess the guy had to go to the restroom or whatever after the meal, like he went to go to the restroom. And so she went outside mm-hmm. to smoke a cigarette and this weird guy comes up and asks her if he could have a smoke. And she's like, uh, no, I don't have, I don't have um, any more cigarettes or whatever. And then he's like, you know what? I think I got one in my car. Uh, let me go to the car. Can I use your lighter? And so they started talking and she said she didn't know why, 
But when they when she looked in the guy's eyes, she he she began to follow him, like he lured her somehow. Right. Because she said it was like weird. Like, why would I just follow this strange guy and she, start walking? Was she in toward... a trance? Maybe. That, that's that's the thing. She doesn't. She didn't call it that, but it sounds weird. And you, we'll get into some of that later, and you'll kind of see the thread there. Cool. She said that this guy just was like looking back at her and was getting her to come with getting him, you know, to come with him. Yeah. So as they got toward the parking lot, there was a big parking lot there and there was a bunch of cars. And she said that when she got out into that parking lot, then he turned and he put his hands on her shoulders and he's like, he's like, look at me, look at me. And when she began to look at him, she was looking into his mouth that he leaned his, she, this is what she told me. Okay. He leaned his head back and his mouth opened up really wide and all of his teeth were like needle, like really sharp conical teeth. That's crazy. That's how she described it. She got a friend of ours that was my old roommate to draw the teeth. Yeah. Think of Venom. That, that's how the teeth oh, look. Wow. Venom, that's the crazy. character. That's what wow. it looked like to me. And she said that he opened his mouth really wide. like, And it looked like, she said that it was like he was going to bite her head off. Wow, that's freaky. And she began to cry when, when I, and then I felt like, like, like I kind of felt bad. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. I did feel bad because I made her tell me, but it was like, I want to know what the heck happened to you. And so this story I've had for a long, long time, all my friends have heard it, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't know what that was. The reason I'm thinking vampire is a, the teeth and then the, the, the trance, sort the of trance like, like, yeah. And now here's what really gets weird. She uh, somebody was walking by as this guy was doing what he was doing and she screamed. It was a woman that saw it. Right. And then she kind of snapped out of it. And as the guy was moving his head toward her, he stopped and became like normal again mm -hmm. and then looked at that girl, the lady that screamed. And then she began to scream. Uh, my girlfriend at the time began mm -hmm. to scream. And then these two soldiers that were walking by there wearing their fatigues or whatever, and they saw this guy looming over her, and he was an, an unnaturally tall guy. Mm -hmm. right. They ran toward the, the scream, these two army guys. Yeah. And then the guy just went up, like, woof, and he was gone. And then they heard something land, like, on a car in the distance. Right. You know, she said it was about 40, 50 yards away. And the other end of the parking lot, and they all looked, but they didn't see anything. When they went toward where the car was, not her, but the guys, right? they saw like the indention of something that had landed on that car. So it was like this guy jumped into the air. This is what I'm thinking. Correct. He jumped into the air and then landed on a car. Cloaked, maybe? I, I have no idea. It's crazy. But it just, that story, and then she would dream about him a lot, you know, and like he was like, you know, in her dreams. Did she ever contact, uh, have any other, have, did she ever have any more contact with him after that? Just the dreams. Just the dreams. That yeah. was the only way. And, wow. and to, as far as I know, when until we went our separate ways. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it was weird because she didn't like to be alone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So she would rent a two-bedroom apartment and have a roommate always. Yeah. Because she was afraid to be alone. You know? It was that's weird. Nutty, she would man. always want me to stay the night when I, when I, you know. Yeah, that's just nutty as all get it. And I was like, I don't want to stay with you. What if he comes for you and he <laughs> mistakes me for you? I'm pretty hot. He might think it's me. <laughs> I just am. kidding. I'm not yeah. hot. Yeah. But you were back then, right? Yeah. Dude, I was too sexy for anything right. back then, dude. <laughs> you, you had a body worth donating it was, to science. Dude, let me tell you, I don't like to brag, right? I'm I'm a very humble guy. <laughs> like I said <clears throat> in the other episode about the zombies. Yeah. Now that. I clarified that. People yes. are like, are you the best smelling guy on earth? And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, yeah. That's what you I know. told you. I got to get me one of those. Maybe. I'm maybe yes. the best smelling yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. That, but I don't want to brag about it. Yeah, there you go. You can't. Yeah. So, in all seriousness, though, she was after this incident. That what tormented her were these dreams. Yeah, the dreams. She would have dreams um, that this guy would come through the window, wow. you know, and like try to try to get it on top of her. And then she was having these dreams that this guy would like, you know, break down the door, and it was always like him trying to, and he was trying to eat her. Oh. Like, just eat her, like, head first. And in some of the dreams, he would start to chew on her, you know? And it was like, it wasn't like these seductive dreams of the vampire where he's like, you know, Bella Lugosi with his hand out, like, I'm going to come and seduce you. No. Yeah. This was it was like, he's a... he was a carnivorous being that was trying to, to, to just, eat her. Just eat her up. Yeah. 
I asked her if she remembered anything about the tongue. What what was the tongue doing when the head was open? And she said it was just like this long, like like thin, like flapping whatever. I'm just thinking, apart from looking at this mouthful of jagged teeth, like kind of like in the style of Venom, the mm-hmm. movie, right? And this was back when Venom was still like it wasn't like as popularized right. as it is now. And she wasn't a comic book person, so she wouldn't have she been didn't like know anything about she wouldn't it. have seen Venom and then been like, "Oh, I'm having nightmares about Spider Man's enemy," and so you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was the one that made the connection to Venom, and she, I was like, you know, like, Venom? And she's like, like, what's that? And I was like, I told her, like, this. I showed her, like, a a, car, a comic book of it, and she was like, kind of, but not really. But the best I could see with the teeth, the way it looked, were like, you know. But she did say that there were, like, front canines that were, like, prominent, you yes. know? Almost like a baboon's mouth, the way it, but, but like it was that. all jagged, and then there were, but they were little and more conical. That's crazy. Very weird, you know? And there's a thread to that. Okay. Well, the, the only other part I think though that probably freaked her out too was like, all this is happening. He's interrupted, and then she's basically in front of him, and then he just boom shoots up into the air, jumps up into the air. Yeah. Now that part I'm sure was probably quite freaky. It's just a, wow. And then of course landing on, you got to think cloaking after that because if they didn't have any visuals on him, those guys that 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 you know the two. The well, there was another guys. woman that saw it. The military guys just saw him jump, like fly up, disappear. Right. They thought he had just vanished. Mm-hmm. And they saw him stand there looking normal. Oh. They didn't see the head, but the other lady did. Oh, wow. Yeah. And if she was actually with her husband, but he was like looking down, I guess, mm-hmm. or something. Not and, paying and, attention. and then he looked up with those army guys from the other side and they all kind of saw him go up. Mm-hmm. Um, so, cause I asked about it, you know, the, those angles. And then of course the douchebag that was in the bathroom, he comes out and is like, what's up? And she's like, I want to go home. I'm, she's hysterical. That's freaky. That's just, woof. You know, the only thing I, I can't get over, it jumps up in the air and then later on, you know, then I guess after those guys gave pursuit, mm-hmm. they find that big dent on top of a car, the top like of car, something yeah. landed, on, landed top on top of it. The only thing I can think of if it, well, obviously it wasn't flying, but as it jumped up, it disappeared. Could that be a kind of a cloaking thing? I have no idea, dude. That's weird. We can, we can go over this yeah. over and over again and we'll <laughs> never figure it out. I know That's that this is another thread. Oh, give us because the thread. Because there was, there was a woman that I got her story from, uh, from New Orleans who had a very, almost identical situation. Uh, so she, she told me. You remember Zane lived in, in yeah. New Orleans, and he was he told me some some weird stuff. You know that that uh, some of the homeless people told him that that yeah. they would find people that would be thrown into the water, uh, desanguinated, or ex, how does is exsanguinated. it ex, exsanguinated? Yeah, yeah, and that they had been like like there would be no blood. They'd be they'd been know? sucked and, dry, and that the police had told them to be careful because they were finding people who had been blooded. Mm-hmm. But the the rumors were that they were vampires. And now New Orleans is known as supposedly a, a, haven. a, a haven for them, yeah. And and it's kind of weird because you remember me and you did an investigation. Oh yeah, we talked uh, yes. to Ernest. Yeah, Ernest, and uh, he that was one of the other things he said that was really weird that it happened to him because he was like, well, you know, the whole dog man thing. He said, but when he went to New Orleans to look for dog man with his buddies mm-hmm. they went in they ended they didn't find any dog man but they ended up in the in a because they they were going to the oh yeah the, i remember that he said um, the area around there they wanted to search for dog man and nothing happened there but correct. they they ended up going into a club that was supposed to be a strip club yeah i remember that he said uh they showed up at the hotel after of course all this started from him wanting to know more about the dog dog man, man. so he goes to new orleans because he heard about the dog man island mm-hmm. he said you know and then of course no luck with the dog man island and then they go to the hotel room in new orleans mm-hmm. and then they decide to go to a strip club across the way that wasn't too far away from the, the hotel room mm-hmm. remember and so they decided but he to said it was like real dimly lit to yes. the point where you could that. barely see the women inside, and yeah. then they went in there, and he was like, "It's a strip club, but you're practically in the dark." Mm-hmm. And the sign was very was very uh, dim, and you know whatever. And, and he told us the name. I can't remember the name. I mean, it was just like he was telling us this story, and it's been so long since he's told us that story. I know that he said that they went inside, 
and they were fumbling around and they had to be led into a back room. Yeah. All... And he said they all got this really, really creepy vibe. Like there was something not right going on there. Correct. Everybody Remember, looked really weird. And, initially and... they thought they were going to get a, a private lap dance. Mm -hmm. And he said at the time, he, you know, he said he had, he had extra cash to throw around. So, you know, single man at the time, all this good stuff. So I, I got to thinking about that. And that always, that got my attention when he was talking about how they were, um, being led around in a in an extra dark, I guess, building for lack of better words. You said it was like a warehouse. Yeah, yeah. It, I thought it was strange where they had just thrown up walls. Mm -hmm. That's the way he described it. Like it was in an industrial area, and uh, kind of like how you have a rave. Like, hey, we're gonna have a rave, and they just show up. You know, the big thing in the nineties, the raves. Yeah. Well, he he went he went the they went there and. They got taken to a back room, and he said that when he looked around, there were these weird-looking guys that were really big that were just kind of standing there, and that one of the girls began to kiss um, on them or something, and then she said something. <laughs> I don't want to get graphic, but she asked if he wanted him her to do something to him, and then she, he thought he couldn't tell whether it was the act of something or if she was asking something else. And he goes, did I just hear that right? And so the friend was like, hey, let's go. So they got really weird. And then they, those guys were kind of standing there in their way. And so then they, they, he said, I need to go to the restroom. Well, they found an exit by the restrooms, right? I think that's what he said. Yeah, And they, he and, did. They, and they walked and out they, the side. Yeah. yeah. Because it was all under the guise of them getting a private lap dance. Yeah. And there was no one else in, the, in there. Nobody there. And then. Of course, once that part of the episode with this was over and they went back to the hotel room the next day, mm -hmm. that building was not there. Remember yeah, he said, said there was no sign or anything. That, that, yeah. that building that they had gone into that was not where they found it because they, they went around and they wanted to go back because they were intrigued. Intrigued. Because they're like, well, that was weird. That's crazy. You know, all the stuff we experienced – last night so let's let, you know it's daylight let's go check it out and of course they retraced their steps from the night before and they couldn't find it there was no yeah. uh no building there so I, I found that story really fascinating and we're definitely going to have to talk with Ernest more to get more details and get get him to get tell us that story all over again because I yeah, think so we can refresh it but well it was kind of yeah, fast I, I, when I he talked told to us, my, my nephew about yeah I remember and my nephew had said something uh about that whole area where he was talking about, you know, when I laid it on him and he was like, that that area is known for weird stuff like that. People go missing. I know that there was a woman that sent me a story and she's like, this is a story about a vampire. And I was like, how do you know it was a vampire? She's like, I live in New Orleans and it's a vampire. Wow. And she said that she was, she, she was walking home from the store. She lived about two blocks from the store mm -hmm. and it wasn't in a real good area. Of course, a lot of New Orleans isn't. But um, it was shortly after Katrina, and there wasn't a lot of people there. A lot of people had evacuated. Yeah. And she said that this guy just stepped out of the alley in front of her and asked her. And it's always like they ask these, like, really weird questions. He's like, hey, do you need help with your groceries? She's carrying one bag. And then she, he was like, here, let me, let, me, let me help you. So he starts kind of walking back into the alley, and she starts to go with him. Now, there again, it, it perked my ears when she said that because I'm thinking, why did you do that? But why did, you know, my ex-girlfriend go with that, you know, walking toward that guy? And, and, did she you know, mention anything about a trance-like state? Or? Yeah, she did. She said that she was like, he kept looking back and, and getting their eye contact, and then he was walking backwards. So she started to follow him, and she couldn't tell me why she did it. It was almost like she was in a trance, so she just kept following him into the alley. And then when he got into the alley, he grabbed her and put her against the wall and the same thing happened, but not as dramatic. It was like he, he, his face began to like morph slowly. And then somebody was walking by and she was, she kind of, he looked, he broke his gaze on her and turned. She could see like uh, his teeth starting to like pop out of his mouth. And that person, they cut, they made eye contact and then she pulled away and then walked out there and started talking to this complete stranger that was walking by. And going like, oh, hey, what's up? And then being friend friendly with him. And they began walking away. And the guy was like, hey, what's up? Like, you know, he don't know what the heck's going on. But this dude in the alley was just kind of sitting, standing there. And But she said that wasn't the end of it. She saw him again. 
Same guy. Yeah, same guy. And she lived on the second floor or something. And and I, I think that's what she said. She was or she was at a friend's. Oh no, she was at a friend's house on the second floor. And they they went outside and they saw this guy standing outside of the apartments, just standing there looking up at them. And then when they turned to go back inside, the guy ended up on the balcony. Like the guy ended up, like they turned around and he was on the balcony. So first she saw him on the she ground. Saw, they saw him on the ground, then he was on the balcony. So they screamed and ran out of the apartment. And the guy, like, I guess let himself in, onto the balcony somehow. I don't, I don't, that's weird. And they ran downstairs to a neighbor and they went to the, into his apartment and they called the police. Wow. And so the police got a description of this guy. And she said, now this is what she said. And she gave me her friend's information to contact her. I never did get a hold of her. But she said that the police told her that that guy is a vampire. That one of the police told her that. I guess they did. And that it is a common, that is, it is known that, that, that they exist there. Now, that was also told to my nephew that lived there for like two years. So, I mean, that's very weird. I've heard a lot of people from New Orleans say stuff like that. Yeah. What, what these beings are, I mean, I guess you can call them vampires. I don't know. I mean, what are they? They I mean, come off it. They, well, they, are they aliens that they certainly, you know, live amongst us? Yeah, I don't know. They certainly come off as vampiric, mm -hmm. you know, in their intent. And when you, you know, describing these events that happen to these people, they definitely come off as, as vampiric. And along with that, you know, in the episode we talked about the zombies, you know, you've got to, you, you got to figure all of the um, history of New Orleans. I, I'm a firm believer that there's people down there that practice voodoo. Witchcraft. Yeah. You know, hoodoo, voodoo, hoodoo, whatever. Things change thanks to language, you know, linguistics. But, and you have the whole, uh, also potentially the whole thing of zombies, you know, that floating around and in um new orleans right along with the vampire because it's it's such a storied city and the paranormal um i guess you could say the paranormally related topics that go with new orleans are are very vast i i just find it totally you know i shucks it could be anything but the similarities that you're talking about with the girl from el paso and this girl you know, the jagged teeth and all that stuff. Now, I find that interesting. So, yeah. Well, the thing about that teeth, though, th 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 that's that's one of the threads that I really couldn't connect as well because I asked her about the teeth. Mm -hmm. And she said that she just saw frontal teeth coming out like spikes. So she didn't really – I think that it was – he didn't get a, a chance. You know, to really fully – How explain. tall? She said the same thing, six and a half feet. Oh, just he's... like Just like, yeah. And Just she like the was one in what, El Paso, five foot nothing or something. I didn't ask her how tall she was, but so she we, said he loomed over her. So I mean, we could guess maybe five four, five five, maybe somewhere around there. I have no idea. How can you guess? Well, the, the she the just average, said he loomed over her. That's what I mean. She the average be, height of a, the average woman. You could be six country. foot and have somebody loom over you if they're six and a half. Right, but the average height, just on averages, average height of a woman in America is five foot six. I have no idea how big she was. I didn't ask. So I'm guessing five six. I'll go with the average. Okay. Why do you? Well, I don't. Okay. It's whatever. Six and a half feet. That's. I like, can give you her information. You can call her and see what, hey, hey, how tall are you? Yeah. <laughs> how tall are you? I'm tempted, um, man. Don't do it. <laughs> my name starts with an M. We'll call her M. M, yeah. how tall are you? Mm -hmm. If you're out there, M, contact me. Tell me how tall you are. It's very important to Armando. It is. Very important. Um, but she said he loomed over her. He was big, but he wasn't like super muscular, you right. know, but he was built. Um, his eyes were, were green. I know she said that. That's interesting. Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, what do you know? The eyes, um, from what I asked of my ex, was she didn't remember the color. You know, like she didn't remember the eyes. They just, she thought they were black, but it was dark. So that's true. But this 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 person said that the eyes were green. Wow, that's just really, that's really freaky. But of course, New Orleans and all the, wow, I I couldn't even begin to, you know, I couldn't even begin to fathom what she was going through. At the time with all, you know, looking at this thing, person, being, whatever it was. And, of course, did she know about vampires at the time or, or was it just? Um, yeah, I don't know. She she was there after Katrina. You know what right. I mean? And so I don't know. Was she from there? No. Okay. No, because I believe she said she was from North Carolina or South Carolina or something like that. Got it. And that she had gone there, you know, to help with the rebuilding and all that. You know, there were people that went there to do to help. Yeah, they stayed there long. Yeah, after. and and I don't know if she knew anything about vampires or anything. I didn't ask her that. Yeah, I, I, it's I would agree with you there that 
people that are not from New Orleans do not understand. Uh, unless they do some research, they do not understand all the paranormal aspects that are tied to the mm-hmm. town itself. Yeah. So it's really interesting. It's a city that's sinking slowly. Yeah, and it's got so much. Just, I mean, again, shameful plug for Vic. I listened to one of his episodes. In uh, shameless plug or shameful? Shameful, shameless. I don't know. Let's just. <laughs> wait, wait. It's a plug for Vic. But we're the, ashamed of you, Vic. Or we're <laughs> we're shamed to plug you. Yeah, but uh, either way, it, you know, I heard one of his uh, episodes where there was a gentleman when he was a young man. Ended up in New Orleans, and while he was down there in New Orleans, because a family member had moved there, he helped her out. Long story short, he helped her out. He liked it. He liked it there, so he stayed with the family member. Of course, he had to get a job and get himself in school, et cetera, et cetera. He met a girl, went to visit her, and he had a dogman encounter in New Orleans on the outskirts. So. There's another paranormal aspect to New Orleans. Yeah. Well, so, a lot of people say it's not paranormal. It's just, yeah, I, I have a hard time believing that. Well, it's definitely not normal. A wolf man running around on two legs is not paranormal. I mean, it's definitely not normal. So it has to not, be. Not, yeah. Paranormal. So, well, the, well by, by the definition, it's paranormal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I find all the. I, th- I think New Orleans is one of those cities across the world that that, that has different, a lot of the different aspects of paranormal associated with it. Yeah. More, and, and it's more common than what people think. Oh, yeah, it's very common. So. Yeah, there were some musicians that were staying at an Airbnb at a subdivision that I was doing security at. And they they were building houses, but th- this was one that was on a street that the house was already built. Right. And so anyways, I was, I was guarding, uh, you know, the subdivision. Um, and so I got to talking to them. And they were pretty cool. They and they told me some pretty creepy stories about uh, New Orleans. They didn't know anything about Dogman, but they knew they knew va- they believed in vampires, which was weird. Like they actually believed that there were vampires there in New Orleans, which most people you would ask them if they believed in that, and they would say no. I guess a lifelong. But they did have some ghost stuff. That yeah. They told me some crazy ghost stuff. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think it's a far stretch if you you have a lifelong New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans, Indian, how how would you say that? New Orleans resident, lifelong resident of New Orleans. I'm fairly certain that most of those folks believe in in, in the uh, the vampire phenomena mm-hmm. because it's just that city. There, there's legends of, of old families that have been there for a long time. Yes. Yeah. I, and I was going to get into some of that in another episode called Immortals. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's... Because there's some weird stuff about that, too. This Immortals, it kind of blends into the vampire thing, but it's a yes. little different. So that's going to be its own episode. But I, I will tell you this. Um, there was a guy that I worked with who was a security guard that worked with us for a while, well, five, six years ago. Mm-hmm. And he stopped being a security guard <laughs> after this incident <laughs> had actually st- was starting his own company. And then he just decided to do another, go another route and go do something else. He said, this ain't for me. Huh? Apparently. Yeah. And and I, I ran into him one day and we started talking. We're outside of a convenience store and we ended up talking for like 20, 30 minutes. Oh, and wow. he told me this crazy story. And uh, I never knew why he just quit and why he didn't pursue uh, starting his own company. I had worked with him for at another company when I, before I started mine. And and started working for the people I'm working with, you know. He he worked with us for a while. But uh he explained to me a really crazy story. He didn't go into detail that day, but I did get to actually go and meet him meet up with him one day and he was a cool guy, I knew him for a long time, so we started talking and he told me a crazy story. Apparently he was on post working with us. He was working on post for me, and he had actually it was at a construction it was at a construction site here in Austin and a guy walked up to him like he, he the where he was working at I don't want to say the name or whatever Correct. because it's a company we work for but he was guarding this subdivision and this guy just came walking down the street and he could see him from a long ways off walking right and he's like why is this guy walking way out here there's nothing out here the houses had just been started and he was the first guard that we had put out there and so he was sitting there and he thought it was odd. And so he's sitting in his truck and this guy comes right up to the truck and is like, excuse me. Um, he's like, I need to use your phone. And he's like, okay, what for? And the guy was like, well, I, I, I got, I was on a date 
and I got kicked out of the vehicle and he goes, women, you know, like trying to be friendly. And yeah. but he said the guy was, it was like a rehearsal. Oh, it was very rehearsed. Very huh? rehearsed. Like he had used this line before or something and he was like, you know, what are you going to do, man? And a girl just dumped me off on the, on the side of the road. And he's like, why way out here? What were you doing out here? And he's like, oh, I'm not from here. I don't know this area very well. And he said that the whole time the guy was talking, he was covering his 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 lips were going over his teeth when he would talk. And so I know the guy that worked for me is kind of a funny guy. So he was he cracked a couple jokes. And uh, I'm not going to repeat it because one of them was kind of, you know. So the guy Very started, crude, huh? yeah, kind of, yeah. So the guy started kind of laughing. And then he said that at, at first, for a second there, his teeth kind of popped out. Oh. And he said that that the inside of his, I guess it would be your incisors, mm -hmm. they were yes. they were jagged. And it scared the heck out of him. And he said, I got the most terrifying feeling from this guy, the most uncomfortable feeling. He said that the guy was extraordinarily pale and that his eyes were, were a weird amber color. And he said that he was, he was a scary looking guy. He said he was bald headed, um, had like kind of a pointy head almost. He said it was a weird, he was just a weird looking guy. He was very muscular and he scared me. He's like, he was very intimidating. And he goes, and I kept getting the feeling like, like when when you're too close to a vicious dog and it's just waiting for the moment to bite you. That's Correct. what he that's what he said. He said it was a very predatory feeling. And so the guy was like said, "So can I use your phone, you know?" And so my friend was so intimidated by this dude. And the, now let me tell you the guy that worked for me. He's 6 foot 5. And he's a big dude. And I worked security with this guy in government housing. And so this guy was not somebody. He was no stranger to rough areas. No. So I was like, dude, you were afraid of this guy? You know? And so he was like, yeah. He goes, he scared me. It was very scary. It was intimidating. And he said, he goes, when I saw the teeth, I thought maybe those were implants or something. But either way, the guy's a psycho, you know? <laughs> yeah. But he said that he goes, I just got this weird tingly feeling, you know, like in, in my head, you know, just like something was wrong. And I thought, I'm, this guy's going to do something to me. And he goes, and it was weird because I had a gun, you know? And he said that the guy, when the guy would look at him in the eye, he kept feeling drawn toward the guy. And he kept, he said, I kept trying to lean back away from the window, though, so he wouldn't grab me. And he said that I was just waiting for the right moment to try to drive off. And so he said that the guy asked him for his phone again and put his hand out. He said when he did, he had really long fingers with really weird-looking sharp fingernails that just looked very unnatural. And he said that at that point, he just like, don't know why, but he just felt compelled to do what the guy said. So he just handed him his cell phone. Whoa. And then the guy was like, why don't you come out of the truck? You know, and he said that he started to do it. And then his phone rang. Oh, wow. And then that kind of like snapped him out of it. Yeah. And then he just like said, okay. And he started the truck up and drove off <laughs> and just left his, left the, the post which I never knew why he did that. Oh, he had never told me this. Did he leave the cell phone with the guy too? He left his cell phone. Oh, wow. Left his cell phone with that guy. And he said that he went the next day and reported it lost, and that was the end of it. And he never went back to that site. And he had never told me, uh, any of us, why he had left until I saw him, you know, later on, like a year. Like I, I guess it was a while back, later that I saw wow. him. And we started talking, and he was like, you know, I felt really bad about it, but something really weird happened to me. And then we started talking about all this different stuff. And I told him there was no hard feelings. I knew something weird had to have happened. And then, you know, but, but I well, just. How many years in the business did you have in at that time? Uh, oh, at that time. Did you have enough time already to know that there's a lot of, I mean, to, to, to be able to. 20 years. There you go. Yeah. So you're like, yeah. You know. I got a long list of weird so stuff So I'm like, I've happened. already, dude, I, folks, I have episodes waiting to be made about some of the weird stuff that's gone on on these posts. I'm telling you. So, and at night, you know, you're at night. Weird yeah. stuff happens, you know, and this guy, like, That's another thing. I, I just, was I just it, was so weird that he would be that intimidating because he's, he's afternoon? taller than me. Was it in the No, afternoon? this was at night. Oh, the, oh. I just said it was at night. Come on, man. Wake up, dude. Oh. I'll smack you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Was, uh, yeah, no, was, it was at night. I mean, it was whoa. just, you know, um, a lot of weird stuff happens at night. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just, I don't know, man. Like I, I. But Austin's a weird city too, you know, yeah, and there's a lot of nightlife. I think where there's a lot of people and there's a heavy nightlife, that's where if vampires exist, that's where they're going to be. Yeah. And, and nowadays, since, you know, there's there's a lot more homeless people floating around in the Austin area, mm -hmm. that, that could exacerbate that particular thing, you know. 
more people out there on the streets. You know, if if you have these vampires out there, that could potentially mean. Well, this would be a place to, you know, New Orleans here. I mean, there's places that, you know, I don't know. I mean, I've heard that the the, the El Paso thing, you know, I had a friend of of, of a friend who basically told us that we were, that, that El Paso had an enclave of night dwellers that, that they would stalk people that would go out into the desert and party and do stuff. Oh, wow. That's weird. I don't know what that is. I mean, I've heard all these weird stories, but it's always the same cities, you know? I've heard about them here. I've heard about them in New Orleans. I've heard about them in, in Rome. They claim that all the catacombs are, you know. And that's another thing I was thinking about when you just mentioned the catacombs. I was thinking, well, I'm fairly certain there's a cave system, un- some type of cave systems under um, El Paso. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Austin, we know there's there's un- there's yeah, caverns there's, there's, around. There's, there. And there's tunnels under, underground. There's tunnels there. All over the under un- in downtown. And then, of course, you think about New Orleans, even though it's a sinking city. There's still some underground stuff, and then on top well, of that, I think that they're from a, a from a from the families, these yes. families that have been there for generations. What's weird though is like when we talked about it on the zombie show, I didn't know how to classify the guy with the red eyes that crawled out at my friend and his wife. Right, I was like, is that a vampire or is that a zombie? You know, it was kind of an in betweener. You know, <laughs> yeah. But he was chewing on somebody. Yeah, I mean, you know. So anyway, we, moving along here. Uh, the other story I was going to tell you. Now, this story was told to me and my brother and a couple of people that we worked together with this guy. And the poor dude actually ties into another story about a haunted object, but I'm not going to get into that today. But we will eventually talk about that. This guy told me we were all drinking one night, and he had this roommate that was kind of weird. Um, you remember? Uh, talk, speaking of a guy who walked around with a stick. Uh, he would go around and he would yell at spirits, supposedly. Yeah, it was his roommate that was like that. He wasn't like that. He was a pretty level-headed guy, but his roommate was kind of nutty. And uh, but but this guy was a pretty pretty normal guy. But we were his roommate was always talking about Atlantis and spirits and stuff. So one day I was over there uh, hanging out with this this guy that worked with us. He was a barback, and he told me. Uh, and all of us, a really strange story that, that when he was living in a trailer park, um, <laughs> straight out of the trailer park, a trailer park. And it was out on the other side of Bastrop somewhere. Oh wow! And he said that he was living out there and there was a really crazy thing that happened with a neighbor. Now he said that this trailer park wasn't real big. There was only about 10, 10 lots. That's the lost pines area out there in Bastrop. Yes, it is. And where he was, was in the lost pines area. Yes. Wow. And so he said that there was like a, tra- a trailer park out there where he lived and it was just like somebody's land and they had just partitioned it off to where they could sell trailer park lots. Mm-hmm. But he said that uh, it was pretty peaceful and there was this guy that had been living out there for like 20 years and he thought it was weird because he never saw the guy during the daytime. Never, ever saw him. He was He would only come out at night. And he would come out like right after the sun went down and he, then he would leave and then he would come back about four or five and he had a routine. He did it. And, but they, nobody really knew anything about him. He wasn't very social. So everybody just assumed he worked at night every day of his life and for whatever reason, but he never was out during the daytime. And the weird thing was all of his windows were blacked out. Right. So day sleeper, maybe, you know, I'm a day sleeper, but it's, 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 uh, some people, depending on the time frame, that's what they would do. Mm-hmm. Um, for many years, I had an, I had a great aunt that she worked night shift at you know at her factory job, and of course, she'd go to her house. She'd had the tinfoil over the she had tinfoil over the windows, so that way she could sleep. You know, as far as the bedroom's concerned. So I don't know that could easily. Well, be here, here, here's what happened. Go ahead. The guy, uh, there was another couple that lived across from them. And they were always fighting, always fighting. And the guy was a, was a drunk. And he was an alcoholic. And he would uh, beat his girlfriend. Oh, wow. And so the sheriff's department would get called and they'd go out there. Oh, they were frequent and, visitors out there, huh? Yeah, so <laughs> frequent, yeah. So one day the, the neighbors were, were, were fighting. They were, they were having a little whatever. And the dude that lived next door who was never around and had been living there for 20 years. Another odd thing was that the guy looked like he was barely 30. So how could he have been living there single as a guy for 20 years? Yeah. And the owner of the property that, that they were renting the spaces from had told them that that guy had been there for 20 years. So anyways, this guy who looked like a 30 year old, he walked over there to the, to them and he had words with the man 
because I guess he was being loud and, and whatever. So he walks back to his uh, side of the property, whatever, the, the the guy that had been there for 20 years or whatever. Yeah, he, the, the he, young looking guy. The young looking guy. Yeah, he yells at that dude and walks right. back over there and they exchange words. Well, over the next week or so, the abusive drunk guy was getting more belligerent with him. Like he drove onto that guy's property oh. and spit, spun out his tires and did some other stuff. And then he left one of his vehicles partway on that guy's driveway sideways. Like he was like, blocking him in. Yeah. Kind of being belligerent. The guy was a drunk. Okay. Right. So, he, and, and this is what the guy told us. Now the, our friend that worked, worked for us, he said he witnessed with his wife, this guy walk out of his, his how, uh, trailer, the young, the young looking guy, young looking trunk? guy, the young looking guy, very angry. And he lifted that guy's car, which he claimed was a Nova, mm -hmm. you know, and he lifted it and just moved it by himself, just walked it and set it straight. Like, and, and, wow. and it was like, it wasn't like he just picked it up and moved it a little bit. No, he picked up the back end and just walked it over there and moved it like it was nothing. And then kind of looked around and that's when him and his wife were like, oh my gosh, this is something weird about this guy. Well, the next day, another fight was going on. The guy was fighting with his girlfriend again. Mm -hmm. And that next day is when the really messed up thing happened. The guy that lived, the the guy had been living there for 20 years, yeah. he walks over there, bangs on the door once, no, and then there was no response. He pulls the door off, just <laughs> yank, yanks the door off, wow. walks in, and there's there's some scuffling noise. And then he walks back out gets in his truck and leaves. And the residents, there were residents that had witnessed this besides them. They walk out and gradually kind of go toward that guy's apartment. The guy's head was turned around backwards. Oh, man. And the girl was unconscious. But the girl had been... Uh, beaten by beat, the guy. Yeah, beaten by the guy. So I guess she was unconscious from that guy. Because the last thing from she remembered... Drunk. Yes, yeah. from the last thing she remembered was getting hit by him. By the drunk. and Yeah, by the <sighs> drunk. So then this guy goes in there turns his head backwards after he rips the door off the hinges and then gets in his car and drives away. And they never see him again. Then the cops start looking for him and they find out, or sheriff's department, whoever, they find out that he's, there's no, his name was there's not, nothing there's on There's nothing on him. No real name, nothing. Wow. The fingerprints don't match anything. He's just like a ghost, a phantom. He disappears. Wow, that's, that's nutty, but... These people saw it happen. When yeah, they ripped the door off the hinges. Yeah, and and I actually followed up on it with my friend's uh, girlfriend. That at the time they weren't together anymore, but she did work at another bar. Right. So I went up there with my friend, and we talked to her, and she told me verbatim that same story. Like she didn't. It wasn't like you know she she it happened. What they saw. I mean they they claim it happened. Did they see this guy bite anybody and drink his blood? No. But who the heck can lift the back of a car and walk it over to another, you know? Especially if he didn't look like the Incredible Hulk or anything. No, like he just right? looked like a normal guy. You know, they said he had long hair and he was, she said he was very good looking, was what she said. And so she was like, he was very good looking. He was polite. He never caused any problems. But he tur turned that guy's head back around. <laughs> and that guy was a big, burly guy that he did that to. So... Very weird. She said he wasn't even in there five seconds, and then he walked right back out and got in his truck and drove off. Sounds like uh, the way you know, if you some you could speculate that that guy sounds like the Brad Pitt of you know character of Interview with a Vampire. <laughs> you, know? you know, except you know, I don't know. He lived in a trailer. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, low key, staying staying out of a yeah. not low key, low key, yeah. <laughs> but low yeah, uh, th know, there, staying on the down low. There's another story I wanted to get in before the time I got. Two more. We got time for it. Um, do we got time? Got uh, five more minutes. Well, okay. I uh, guess. I guess you know what, folks. I'll. We're gonna cut this one short this time because we're gonna give you a part two on this. Maybe, yeah. At a later date. At a later date, we'll come back to it. I got a couple more uh, vampire stories for you, folks. The possible vampires, but we are running low on the time. So that's all for today, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Crazy. I don't know what to think. I don't know. These stories are crazy. And this and these topics are those topics, man. It's so hard to get a handle on anything mm -hmm. with these topics because are they vampires? Yeah. I mean, who knows? Well, I the mean, unfortunate thing too is pop culture and Hollywood and all that stuff hasn't done 
the whole vampire genre any favors because, you know, they start doing all kinds of stuff. And so people don't know what to believe or they look at what Hollywood puts out and they believe everything wholeheartedly that Hollywood puts out. Now, there may be a kernel of truth in what Hollywood puts out when they portray vampires and whatnot, but you can't, I, I, I'm one of those people that says you can't put all the stock into it. You, I had somebody tell me that that Hollywood, what they do is the, the the fictional stuff they put out is actually real, based off reality. No, it's actually real. Like not no, not like it's yeah, you're right, based on reality. But it's actually that's what's really happening. Mm-hmm. And then the stuff they pass off as true stuff is just them stuff mixing they made lies. Up. You know, yeah. yeah, it's like the opposite. Well, truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah, I, sure. I don't know what to believe anymore, but. The, these stories are, are weird, you know, especially the ones that were told to me by people that, that worked with us and, mm-hmm. and whatever else, you know. Um, well, if I, I were going to be a vampire, I'd want to be Blade. I mean, the Daywalker. <laughs> I mean, I'd want to be Blade. I mean, if that's going to be, if it's, gonna, if it's come down to something like that, you know, all their strengths, none of their weaknesses, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's the guy I'd want to be, but <laughs> all joking aside, though, the vampire topic is so, you know. And there are those people out there who drink a little bit of blood, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Yeah, weirdos. I call those, well, you know, <laughs> I, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody, but I call I, those I, posers. I don't care. I mean, you're, posers. you're going out and drinking blood. You're the one that's putting yourself at risk for diseases. That, that That's one main you wanna thing. want to drink blood, go ahead. Yeah. But, you know, those out there, those are the poser vampires. You yeah. Know, the people just want to be seen. Kind of like uh, you have the people out there that go by the the defunct police police guards that they sell at auction and then they drive around and they try to put them back as close to what a squad car looks like for police and then they drive around and do all that kind of stuff. It's it's that kind of thing. And so, but yeah, again, vampires, definitely a topic I definitely need to delve more into and study. Yeah, study the legends of them a little yeah, better too. Most definitely. But uh, yeah, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, Dots Wolfman 88 at gmail.com dot wolfman88 at gmail.com wolf and sal at gmail.com gmail. wolf and sal at gmail.com also private message me if you want to talk if you want to send me your stories that's kind of what a bunch of people are doing anyway oh yeah you got me on Facebook just message me look me up Josh Turner I got a, a werewolf as a my profile yeah mm-hmm. and don't forget to like subscribe comment you leave us your comments leave us your thoughts mm-hmm. and uh please go to YouTube and subscribe even if you listen to us on other platforms go to yeah. YouTube and subscribe Another thing I was going to tell you guys, uh, real quick, we are getting uh, together about some merchandise that we yeah, might be selling working, in the future. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and if anybody is an artist out there that wants to submit some art for us to use, let me know. Sure. J- send us your artwork, and maybe we can make it into some merchandise. And we can put your put your artwork out there. Don't so. make me come to your house and <laughs> pull the door off the hinges. And drink your blood. I didn't say all that. God, gross. <laughs> Disgusting, dude. No, I was just going to pull the door off the hinges and make you buy a new one. <laughs> Scare you to death, Good dude. grief, dude. This guy's talking about drinking blood. What the heck? And there are all those out there. They're like sick, that. so. Anyways, guys, I'll let you go. That's right. it for today. It's been fun. Hey, guys. We'll see you on the next show. See ya. <laughs>